first I want to talk about just the break that you guys had, but it also kind of wasn't a break because you did get back at it. How much did that help or, or contribute to the finish that you guys had over the weekend? Um, well, I, you know, it's hard to say. I, what I will say is when the guys came back from four days off, they were really sharp. And I think that was always the most important thing, you know, and something that I keep talking with the guys about is uh, our biggest enemies are ourselves. Right? And I think it, when you get complacent, um, when you feel like you've achieved something, um, then there's nothing left to achieve and you lose that hunger. And a big part of why we are where we are is the driving, is that mentality to, to keep getting better as a group, individually, as a collective. Um, and the guys did that. And again, Montreal, I think we played a really good game. Uh, unfortunately, we just lacked the, the goal that would have really opened things up. But that's going to happen. Um, looked at some stuff this morning and, and the guys are spot on. And, um, so I feel really good about the group and where we're at at the moment. It's, it's really awesome hearing you or seeing you guys be so frustrated with a draw on the road because I think something in the past that'd be like RSL would be like, let's go, like that's great. Um, what's, what's changed about this organization that you guys are, are not settling for a draw? I, I think expectations. I think we, you know, in, in the first 17 games, we've seen that we can compete with anyone in this league um, and control large portions of the game, create really good opportunities, uh, give very few opportunities up. And uh, these, these moments are fleeting in sport. You know, we're, I think we're on the cusp of, of being a team that's, that's you know, mentioned along the lines of the LAFCs and the Cincinnati's of, of the world. Um, and the onus is on us to maintain that standard and to hold ourselves accountable every day in training um, so that when we go to the games, we're not changing anything. You know? and, and so that's why, for me, uh, training is always the litmus test. It's not Saturdays. Uh, Saturdays will always be a reflection of, of the Tuesday. Yeah. The day that no one really cares about. Yeah. Um, but we care about Tuesdays. Um, and, and, and I think for me, uh, you're seeing it in, in, in the performances. And, and again, when, when the guys are upset, getting a point on the road, um, it just goes to show what the collective standard is for this group. What's made you this way? What? Every time I talk to you, I feel more inspired to be a better person. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> what that's no, that's that's my aim, really. Uh, becoming a better coach, becoming a better person, father, husband, uh, friend. Um, and, and again, I think in our society today, I, I think it's really easy to um, to blame. And, and, and the funny thing is, is that we have all the power in our lives to be great. And it's really about uh, quieting the voice of limiting self-belief and changing that, 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 that narrative that goes on uh, in our subconscious that's, that's telling us we're great, that's telling us we're going to come in today and be great. Um, and then before you know it, you become the person that you envision in the future. And it's, it doesn't happen overnight, but it's little moments that, that really mark the difference. And I think that's what this group has really taken on is that, that, that challenge to be great. It's not easy, at times vulnerable, yeah. Um, as they say, it's, 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 it's lonely at the top. Um, and it's really about you motivating you every day to be better. Yeah, I mean, you came into the organization and really had to essentially get this thing back on track. And man, have you done that? When we talk about going to Kansas City this week, it seems like road games should be a challenge, but you guys show up. What challenges do we face? I mean, Kansas City's humid. Just, just, I mean, whatever, that's the weather, but like, take me through it. Yeah, no, I, I think every, every team poses its own challenges um, and locations, it's gonna be hot and humid. Um, Kansas City are in a rough uh, run of form at the moment, but they have the same access to, to great players that we have. So as far as like the salary cap and all that, it's a level playing field. And, and I think what separates teams, uh, teams from others at the moment is their belief. You know, LAFC are a great run of form at the moment. We've won, I think, their last six. Yeah. Um, okay. And their history precedes them, right? And so, like, their opponents think about, oh, we got LAFC, come, oh, we have RSL coming in town. And for us, um, it's about showing up and making sure that we validate whatever they're thinking about us before. Yeah. Um, and so I think that, that, that's really the challenge, it you know, because the tactics, we've played against all kinds of different systems. We've played against different athletic profiles on, on different teams. Yeah. And, and the only constant is us. Mm. The only constant is us. And so understanding what we want to do, which the guys have a great understanding and have been executing at a really, really high level. It's about bringing the mindset to be a winner so that you prepare the right way and so that you step on the field and execute the right way.
Talk about winning 14 game unbeaten streak. Do you realize that this is a historic run right now? Um, not, not really paying any attention to that. I'm, I'm in the day to day. Um, I don't get caught up in that um, because I also know that in order to keep that going, it's about the Tuesdays. You got to care about Tuesdays. It doesn't really matter. The game days are just a reflection of everything we do um, during the week. And so for me, um, I, I think it speaks, uh, I think it's a barometer of where we're at. But by no means is a barometer of what we can be. Wow. Um, so no one on the team talks about it. You guys just come to work every day. Nobody mentions, hey, we're number one. Let's it hasn't been mentioned in that locker room for the past 14 games. Wow. Okay, that's amazing. Well, coming home on Saturday, um, the, one of the players we were just speaking to, he literally said that he thought the Colorado game at home and even just uh, one of the other games at home against Austin was maybe the loudest he's ever heard. And he's a homegrown player. So... This is so much fun to be a part of. Like, are you are you feeling this? Absolutely. I, I think our fans have I've really, you know, there's a couple fans that greeted us coming in from Toronto yes, or from Montreal yesterday, which was really cool. Wow. Um, and and I think that as a professional athlete, you always carry the 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 onus of of bringing that fan base to life and making them excited about what they're doing. Um, and our fans are are a part of the club, right? It's not like it's separated. Their energy on the field is felt on the field. The way we play and the mentality we play with excites the fans. So it becomes a symbiotic relationship um, that I think if there's pressure, it's, it's really to be our best selves to get our fans and continue to make right, the right a, a fortress. Last couple questions here. During the time off, what, was, what, were, you, what were you doing? Um, Obviously not sitting on your couch. What were you doing? <laughs> I, I was boring. I was. Uh, I went. I went. Actually, I went back home to spend some time with the fa my family. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I just went to Colorado and, and and hung with the kids. Got a son in college. I got a daughter who's going to be a senior next year. Uh -huh. And my wife, who is probably the one that gets the short short end of the stick in this whole process, <laughs> where she's now becoming an empty nester on her own. But really excited about um, getting together soon. In the meantime, just really. Loving on all the people that have given me this platform to, to do what I enjoy. Absolutely. Final question for you right now, this team overall, I know we're unsatisfied with the nil-nil draw, but what do we like? What stands out? What are you confident in? I know we talk about mindset, but take mm -hmm. me through maybe skill set. Yep. Then you're like, you know what? We got this going for us. Yeah, no, I think uh, in the last two games in particular, we've done a really good job of, of pinning teams higher up into our attacking third. Mm. And I, I thought early on in the season, we were – going forward when there was no doors or lanes available to penetrate. And then we get caught in this transition game. Um, when we're on top of our game, we're dictating to our, opponents, uh, to our opponents where we want to play the game. And that's obviously a lot of tactical understanding, but it's also a collective understanding as to what we're trying to achieve when we have the ball. If we can break lines and go, we want to go. If we, if we get up there and there's lanes closed because they defend and they recover right. quickly, how are we going to impose ourselves with the ball to asphyxiate them, but also to then find the right openings to attack. And if we make a mistake, it's never a problem because we have now numbers centrally to be able to win the ball back and create a second opportunity from our attacking shape. So I thought that's been really good. And I, and I continue to be impressed with our ability to maintain a high line and, and be really front foot defending and not just sit back for five minutes and let the other team have the ball. So everything we do is about how are we going to control the game. And I really enjoy how the guys are, are, are dictating the tempo of the game and the areas in the field in which we want to play. Well, and I'm just curious, follow-up question. Did you think that you guys did not dictate the game as well as you could have this past weekend? No, I thought, I, I thought we did. I thought that's we did. Frustrating. That, that's the That's where the frustration comes, okay. is that we, again, we went away from home and we played as if we were at home, yeah. but just didn't, didn't find the net. And so some of the things that we talked about is getting more players. So when we break a corner or we get a, a, a wing back in a good position to cross the ball, or we have a forward making a half space run and is ready to cross, how many people are committing to get in numbers in the box? Because if you want to score, for as much as it is you know, making plays, it's also a, a numbers game. What, yeah. what percentages do we have with X amount of players in the box versus one player versus three or four or right. five? Execution. So execution becomes a key. So I think that's where the disappointment lies. But as far as the actual general run of play, the game model being expressed in its entirety, it was on display. Yeah. Boom. Pablo, one dumb question for me. Is it, is it a <laughs> sign of respect that you go to Montreal and they put 11 behind the ball for a lot of that game and try to hit on the counter? Yeah, no, I think, again, I, I think that's the difference between being 
the hunter and, and now being the hunted is that teams are going to try to scheme in, in various ways to try to get an advantage against what we're doing. And if they're not able to press us high, which we've been really, really good at in recent games, then the next obvious thing is to get numbers behind the ball and make it very difficult to score. And, and so for us, it's really understanding what, what our game model, the, the, the benefits of it, but also the difficulties that we're encounter and how we're going to now focus in on the, the details in the final third to be more goal productive whilst teams decide to put 10 guys behind the ball. Sean, anything? I walked in a little bit late, but I, I, I kind of wanted to follow up with you. We asked you a little bit about Bodie after the game and kind of him being put into a pretty tough position, obviously moving around in different spots and whatnot, but he really kind of set, settled the defense in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. I think, replaced Jay Glad pretty well. He's done it a couple times this year. Have you seen like another man out of him I guess, this season from kind of what he's been for the last couple of years? Absolutely. I, I think Bodie's a player um, that's gaining in this moment um, a, a depth of knowledge of the game yeah. because he's playing in multiple positions. I, I think oftentimes when you play, say, right wing back or right back, you're seeing the field from literally one side. When you play in the middle of the field, you begin to understand how important it is to now pull your outside back along with you as you shift to make sure you have cover. So that when now when he plays right back, he's gonna naturally do that because of the importance he felt as a center back. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and the same thing when he plays you know, right wing uh, for Andres, he understands how important it is to get the guy in front of him in an inside position so I can deal with the wide areas. And so, position, so all these things are evolving his level of understanding of the game and our particular game model um, and, and I think he's gone from, you know, when I first got here in 2021 to where he is now, he's, he's, a, different, he's a different man. Uh, I think he's, he's really grown into himself and gaining confidence. And I think that's what I see in him as well, is a guy that he's one of the best passers out of the back. And, and, and so now when you get those, this, this understanding of the game being played in front of you and you're able to now break lines with your passes, you can just see him playing with a different mindset and his energy is different as well. That's funny because I, I, I saw kind of ways where him as an outside back really benefited him, I think, playing center back. But now it also sounds like from what you're saying that kind of the opposite is also a little bit true as well, that playing a center back makes him a better outside, outside back. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it's kind of, and I, I've had this conversation with him because I had the same kind of trajectory when I first came in the league, which was you're jack of all trades and a master of none. But what you become a master of um, is under, understanding the nuances of the game because you're seeing it from so many different angles. And that is hard to gain if you're only playing one position ever. And so they're specialists, and that's the advantage of being a specialist. But the, the advantage of ha being able to play multiple positions is your understanding for, for, for the game becomes greater and deeper than playing just one position your whole life.